Hello, everyone. My name is Runjo Zhang or Richard Zhang. And today I'll be talking about ultrasound guidance for cirrhosynthesis. So cirrhosynthesis is a procedure where it's used to extract fluid from the pleural space. There are two types of cirrhosynthesis that's performed in the field. One of them, which being diagnostic thoracentesis. This procedure is done to remove a small sample of pleural fluid, about 60 milliliter, to determine the cause of the pleural effusion. The therapeutic thoracentesis is done to remove a large volume of pleural fluid, about 600 milliliters to 1,200 milliliters. This is done mainly to relieve the symptoms of pleural effusion or other fluid occurring in the lungs. So pleural effusion, as I mentioned, is a major um, problem that will cause, lead to a thoracentesis being performed on a patient. A pleural effusion um, is defined as excess fluid in the pleural space. Well, the extra liquid between the diaphragm and the lungs and the pleura will compress the lungs which makes the lung collapse and reduces lung function, which um, will causes um, hypoxia on the patient. There are three main ways where pleural effusion is detected in, in the hospital, one of which being chest x-ray. However, this is not a very accurate way of de detecting pleural effusion, with it only having 47% diagnostic accuracy when compared to chest CT being the baseline. Chest CT uh, being the most accurate, however, is very time consuming and very expensive to perform. Sometimes you may have to wait an hour or more to get a chest CT and this result back to the patient. And sometimes patients just don't have the time to wait. Chest ultrasound, um, despite being very readily available, even be able to perform on the bedside of the patient with your phone app and the butterfly, has a 93% diagnostic accuracy uh, regarding pleural effusion which is the prefer, preferred um, method of diagnostic. The causes of pleural effusion, um, here are some of the causes of pleural effusion, one of which being heart failure, failure, cirrhosis, nephrotic syndrome, pneumonia, cancer in the thorax area, which being lung cancer, breast cancer, and so on. Or it could also occur in patients who had a recent open heart surgery. And on the right, you can see a um, diagram of a pleural effusion where the lung is flapping in the liquid. The pros being used in this procedure actually includes all three. Um, I will mention each of them as we move forward. There are two different types of thoracentesis being performed. One of them is called the static technique. The static technique marks a puncture spot using ultrasound before procedure, but it does not utilize any ultrasound during the insertion of needle and extraction of liquid. The dynamic technique, however, um, requires a physician to place a probe in a sterile seat and watch the needle in real time as the physician insert the needle and extract the liquid. This is the technique I'll be focusing on at it, as it is more um, effective and safe for the patient. To perform, ultra, to perform a thoracentesis, you first have to make sure there is a, enough of a pleural effusion for, uh, to create a safe zone so you can insert needle and have it um, staying between the pleura and the lung and not to puncture the lung, causing a pneumothorax. To do so, uh, we would use a curvilinear or phase array probe um, with a patient laying in an upright position, the marker towards the patient's head. You first start at the tense intercostal space and you move cranially until the diaphragm is visualized. And this is to make sure there are fluid that's uh, enough of a space to place a needle through. And here uh, is again a diagram of a pleural effusion. You can see here the dark anechoic fluid above the diaphragm, the diaphragm being the hyperechoic white line above the liver is surrounding the lungs, the lungs being the lighter color here. And you can also see in the diagram, the spine sign where the spine extends past the diagram. 
And there's also a distinct lack of a curtain sign with when the patient breathes in and out. So um, to place the, to locate the correct puncture point in each patient, you first have to use the face ray probe and you have to place it along a long axis orientation at the eighth or ninth intercostal space, uh, intercostal place on the posterior axillary line. The marker is oriented at the patient's head. The needle should be positioned at, in the center of the face ray probe. And this is done so to avoid the, um, the, the nerve, nerve and vascular bundle that lies on the lower inferior side of the rib. And here is a diagram of where the needle will be inserted into a patient. And on the ultrasound of a dynamic thoracic technique, you can see the needle tip being inserted into the pleural space as a hyperechoic, shiny, like white dot, and um, the lungs and liver and diaphragm being around it. There are actually development of special probe specifically made to perform uh, thoracentesis. This is a dedicated curvilinear probe equipped with a hole guide for needle insertion. And it has been proven clinically to increase the success rate and uh, a success rate of thoracentesis on patients. Um, I mentioned before, there's a safe zone that you have to determine for thyrosynthesis. This is done using the linear probe. And to determine um, such safe zone, you first place linear probe in a long axis orientation with a marker pointed towards the patient's head. And here is a um, uh, ultrasound image of what you might see when using linear probe on a patient with pleural effusion. On this high frequency probe was an indicator pointed towards the patient's head, which is on the left side. You can see the chest wall. Immediately after that, you see the pleural, uh, parietal pleura and the pleural effusion between the parietal pleura and the lung. And the anechoic pleural effusion is our safe zone. This is where you want the needle tip to stay in between, to not puncture the lung, to effectively extract the liquid. And here is where you see the lack of a safe zone. Here you can see the spleen and the diaphragm being very close to the chest wall or the purity of flora. If a needle was inserted here, the diaphragm, oh, when the patient breathes in and out, diaphragm could expand or stretch or compress and therefore getting damaged or puncture by the needle. And with that, this is my conclusion um, after researching this topic. Uh, I believe the accessible and reliable attribute of ultrasound makes it inseparable from diagnosing, diagnosing pleural effusion and performing thyrosynthesis. And the ultrasound guided thyrosynthesis makes the procedure much safer uh, for patients. And the plus side of what we learned in the past two weeks is that the fact that there are no radiation for ultrasound it is um, essentially, it's only plus side and no negative side. Thank you so much. That's my presentation.